I'm going to show you three wiring diagrams for the uh, connection of the wiper motor and, or the actually the switch, I should say. Uh, the first one's going to be the park position. And you can see that on the right hand side, <clears throat> I have the uh, kind of the general schematic I've redrawn here that shows the connect or the switch on the right and the connector for the go into the, the uh, motor on the left. And I've also added a picture on the left of a photograph of the rear of the switch with the pin numbers numbered one through four in a counterclockwise uh, direction there. So, and also another thing that's kind of important that I've never seen on some of these drawings is uh, which way are we on that switch, which way are we looking at it? <laughs> well, uh, is it the front or the back? So this is actually the back. So, uh, I've noted that on the schematic here. And one final thing is if you look in this inside this the actual switch schematic symbol, uh, there's a, a heavy dark line between pins one and two. What I'm representing there is the rotating contact in, inside the switch that, that makes or br and breaks con a connection between the different pins as you rotate the, the switch uh, from one position to another. So so basically, in the park position, what we have is pins one and two are connected together, and uh, it'll park the the uh, uh, the wiper. Okay, so the second sheet is position one, uh, which is the low speed position, and uh, you'll notice that the uh, black line representing the contact in the switch is now moved to pins two and three, which is uh, will fire the motor. Well, basically, if you follow the green arrows, you'll see that uh, the switch 12 volts is coming in, uh, goes through contact three over to pin two on the on the uh, connect on the switch, and then goes over to uh, the correct pin on the plug for the uh, low speed position. So uh, that's uh, pretty much it for the position one or low, what I'm calling position one, which is the low speed Okay, and then lastly, we have the high-speed position. And if you look at the little contact, the rotating contact in the switch, it's now moved to positions three and four. So, and if you follow the, the green arrows, you can see that the switch 12 volts now goes from pin three to pin four. And then that wire is connecting to the high-speed connection on the, the plug for the motor. So uh, that's... From a diagram point of view, that's what all we have to do is, is follow those, those connections and we should be in pretty good shape. So uh, let's go ahead and start hooking this thing up. So I have the plinth on the bench here. And here's my new switch. This is the TR6 switch. And it's going to go in here something like that. Let me just do a rough, rough assembly. There we go. It fits in the hole pretty nice. I, I mean, yeah, that's not bad. So, so here's what I'm going to do. I think I, I was talking to my friend Jerry. He's doing the same, same mod for his car and. We have these uh, washers, they're an inch ID and a two inch OD. So the thought is to cut this key in here, into this piece here, glue this or epoxy it to this back panel and that'll lock this from turning. So, cause you know, it's, it's pretty easy to turn even when, you know, it needs to have this this thing indexed somehow. So, so that's what I'm gonna do. I have to, like I said, we have to cut a slot in this to go into this key, and then this should just slide on there. I, I want to get it to where this will slide inside there uh, with this key, and then we can just I can just turn this the way I want it, or put epoxy on this surface and on here, and then just put it in here. You know, hook connect the uh, or index it, the washer into the key. And then just tighten it down with the epoxy in there and let's let it sit for 24 hours. And I think I should be good to go then. So anyway, that's the plan. So um, first thing I'm going to do is 
I have this Dicom. This is left over from when I did the rear end update on my Triumph with the uh, CV joints. On the TR4A, they're, the openings for the CV joints are just a bit small, so I had to uh, mill them out or sand them out just a little bit. And this, I just painted this stuff on the ins. If you want to check that video out, basically what I did is paint the inside of the CV or the swing arm with dike and stick the axle in there and just rotate it once, pull it out, and I could see where it was scraping. So I just kept sanding and sanding until I'd put Dicom on and uh, it wouldn't remove, there wasn't any scrape. So anyway, that's, that's where we're at for this. I'll just let this dry and then I can scribe on here where, uh, where I want that notch to be. Okay, so I stuck the, the switch through the vise so it's, you know, flat in there. And I'm just going to take a, a marker here and just carefully go around the sides of this guy. It's not going to be very much of a, a notch, really. I think I'm going to just do it with a file, maybe. I don't know if you can see it. There's my mark right here. It goes down, over, and back up. So, let me get that filed and I'm sure you don't want to watch that, and then we'll see how it fits. Okay, I'm not going to lie. Here's my trusty saber saw to cut a slot. So basically, here's my little notch. Let me get it on the paper so you can see the contrast a little better here. So here's my uh, my washer with a notch. And then this guy's going to go in here. It's going to go in here. <laughs> So that, that fits pretty good. I think that'll be perfect. So now all I need to do is uh, well clean this off and then get some epoxy and figure out how we, want, how we want to orient this switch and glue it down to the plinth here. And then um, phase one should be ready to go. I thought that went a, lot, a whole lot better than I thought it would. Wow. Let me see how this fits on the back here. Oh yeah. See? That'll work out pretty good. Okay. Great. Okay, so I have my washer all ready to go. I put a, an index mark here that'll end, let me end up with the terminals on the top. I think that'll be easier to, to do from a wiring standpoint. I got another washer for the back of here for the my other switch I'm putting in. Everything fits, so I think I'm in good shape there. This space is just a backup washer for this. So anyway, I guess uh, I'm down to uh, making the uh, mixing up the epoxy. And what I think I'm going to do, I'm just going to pull this back and just smear some around in here, and then just push it forward. That way I'll keep my alignment and everything. So I'm going to go ahead and get started on that. Okay, so what we're going to do is, like I said, I'm just going to slide this back. That looks pretty straight. I have this back here. I'm just going to, I got some left here, so I'm just going to. Smear it around here. And then tomorrow I should be ready to uh, put this together. We shall see. So it's been 24 hours or so, and uh, the epoxy's all hard. Uh, the switch is in there. Uh, I haven't decided if I'm going to use this knob or not. I, it's a little awkward to use, but but anyway, looks like that part's done. I'm going to make one last additional modification to the switch before I button this thing up forever. And I noticed that I can't see. There's like a little nut 
I don't know if you can see it. There's a little nut down in there. One of those slotted, like a ring type nut. I can't get that thing tight enough to keep the switch from moving back and forth a little bit. So I think what I'm going to do is mix up some more of my two-part epoxy and just put it in between the front of the switch body and this metal adapter here. So that should solve that problem. Yeah, so anyway, one last thing to go. I think we're almost there. Okay, that should do it. I just put a, some uh, the epoxy in between the plastic and the, the aluminum uh, spacer piece. So I think we're that, that should solve the problem. So, yeah. All right, well, uh, 24 hours from now I can go ahead and start using the switch, I guess. <laughs> okay. Okay, so let's hook up some wires. So, on pin one, which is this guy, we want to have brown with a green stripe. Okay, and on pin two, we want to have red with a green stripe. On pin three, on pin, th well, let me get this unwound here. Three goes to, this is our switch 12 volts, so one side goes to one of the pins on the washer switch. And then, where's the other one? Okay, that goes to this, this is a female, or male terminal, so that's going to go here. Okay, and then, you can't see this, but I'm hooking up the other side of the, fan, or the washer. And finally, the blue with the green stripe goes to that terminal. Okay, so that's all hooked up. And then I have the battery disconnected, so I'm just going to go ahead and hook everything up and tempt fate here. So uh, here's my other switch. This is for my modified um, hazard switch. This is basically just driving a relay now, or two relays, I should say. And that guy goes there. So that's going to be next to the light switch. Tighten it up. Okay. Scooch this back in. Get that out of the way. Sorry, I didn't mean to bump you. Okay. So that's going to go in there like that. And I can still get up here and fish the ignition switch in to its spot. I think I'm going to screw get this set up in here still. So. Where do all of my tools go? Okay, so I'm not gonna have you watch me do all this stuff. I'm just gonna when I get all set to go, I'll I'll bring you back. Okay, moment of truth. Keys on. That works in slow speed. Works fast. The washer works. Oh, my side issue. My hazard lights work. <laughs> Here's from outside the car. And you can see that the washers work. There's slow speed. fast speed and they park success well that only took me a month <laughs> okay well I think that'll close out the video uh, series for the wiper upgrade and <clears throat> you can see there's 
my washer and my TR6 style wiper motor. I think I think Colleen and I are all set for a, a less stressful drive. So anyway, um, thanks for watching and subscribe. That's it for now. Please like and subscribe.